This is a review lecture on thermochemistry practice. For this semester, there is one less lecture section than typical, so I am offering this not on a typical class day, but something you can complete to help you for test three. Our first question begins with actually chapter seven to set this up. Typically, when I start a class for the beginning of the semester, I fill up a hydrogen balloon and explode it. Since I cannot explode a hydrogen balloon for you myself, here is a quick video. <laughs> I tell students there will come a time when they will fully appreciate what happens when the hydrogen balloon explodes. We're not quite done with the class yet, but so far you know something about the stoichiometry, about the Lewis structures, about the amount of gas involved, and very soon we'll review the thermochemistry. Now that you have seen the video, if the balloon is approximately one liter in volume, how many moles of hydrogen react? We're going to assume the balloon is at one atmosphere of pressure and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. I'm sure you realize you need to use PivNert. Your job is to substitute your variables and make sure you use the correct R and temperature in Kelvin. Now let's think about the stoichiometry a moment. In the previous question, you should have the number of moles of hydrogen. Remember that the stoichiometry is two to one. So please determine the number of moles of oxygen that react. Our next question is to use bond enthalpies to determine what is delta H naught for that reaction. Remember to get your Lewis structures and account for the fact that you have two hydrogen molecules and two water molecules. Here is a table of bond energies in case you need to refer to it. Now, based on your enthalpy calculation and your observations from the video, how can the reaction be described? Now I'd like you to determine delta H naught based on the amount of hydrogen in the balloon. So earlier you had a question where you figured out how many moles of hydrogen there is. You also figured out delta H naught for the reaction as written, which has two moles of hydrogen. Now let's think about the sign of delta S naught for this reaction. Of course, you're going to look at moles of gas on reactant side and product side. Now that you have the signs of delta H naught and delta S naught, tell me something about this reaction. Will it work at any temperature, high temperature, or low temperature? I guess it could be non-extensive, but you did see it happen, and it's likely to happen under many conditions. Based on your signs of delta H and delta S, at low temperature, which means, of course, the delta H term is the one that's important, what would this reaction look like? Does it go uphill or downhill or stay the same at low temperature? Now let's think about high temperature. At high temperature, the minus T delta S term is in charge. So what would that be? Uphill, downhill, or the same? Let's assume our reaction is at equilibrium. Maybe this would be because we are preparing to have fuel cell cars which burn hydrogen and oxygen and create water so maybe you're working on the engine system of a fuel cell car. We're going to focus on what happens to H2, and our first action is going to be to remove O2. What will happen to the amount of H2 when O2 is removed? 
Again, we'll focus on H2, which is on the reactant side, and we want to know what happens when heat is added. So I'll remind you that if we have an exothermic, heat goes on the product side. And if you had an endothermic reaction, heat goes on the reactant side. For this next one, we're asking what happens to H2 when H2O is removed. For these conditions, we're at kind of high temperature. So H2O would be in the gas phase. Finally, we are at equilibrium and a catalyst is being added to the reaction. What will happen to the amount of H2? I will remind you that a catalyst affects the transition state, but equilibrium amounts are impacted by the relative energies of the reactant and the product. I hope you found this to be a helpful set of review questions. Good luck on your test three.